And we are back for this top four match here uh, with Daniel Walker versus Mitch uh, Kendrick, okay, Mitch v VGC. Uh, if you want to check Mitch out on Twitter, it's at Mitch VGC and at Ludi Cola for Daniel Walker. Here we have, um, I guess we have uh, Lou Mario, okay, Roland Walker, who actually just lost to Daniel in the last round. Yep, I just lost. I'm so salty. I need some salt control. <laughs> uh, probably a dietary issue, my friend. Yeah. All right, I'll so, say so the sodium levels are really high. <laughs> what do you think we can be expecting from this kind of a match here? Uh, well, I think um, what's interesting about um, Daniel's team so far is that uh, it's actually um, it's Daniel's running Gorgas, which is really really interesting. Um, obviously, you don't see Gorgas at all in this format, and Daniel's actually had a, like a past streak of actually being like really unique choices to even VGC thing and even this format as well. So. Yeah, definitely. I think it's those unique choices and that um, that mindset that goes into it from him yeah. that kind of gets him a lot of the wins, I would say. I believe in, the, in some of the past PCs, he's brought Seismitoad, for example, and one with that, and I'm like, whoa. That was a yeah. Swift Swim Seismitoad with a, with, as a rain team, wasn't it, with Polytoad? Yeah, yeah. Ludi Collar by one point in the rain. So, yeah, it's like... And that craziness. It's, like, yeah, yeah, it's definitely those interesting kind of sets that yeah. nobody seems to expect that really give Daniel the upper edge. You don't really know how to predict for someone like Daniel Walker. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. True. And do we know if, um, because I know you faced uh, Daniel earlier in the Swiss rounds as well, do we know if Mitch and Daniel actually ever faced off? Uh, I believe they faced off before. I, I remember I, I, faced, I faced off against Mitch and Swiss. I beat, yeah, I, I, beat, I beat Mitch and Swiss. Um, and then Daniel, yeah, Daniel and Swiss, I had close games with Daniel as well. And then I had Precious Blades misses, uh, double prep blades miss against Daniel just now as well. Mm. Uh, apart from other things in the top cut, so yeah, assault. The game we play, the game that is we play. All right, so we're just about to get um, them connecting up right now. Um, the, the teams we're looking at right now, Mitch Kendrick rocking out with a Smeagol, Bronzong, uh, Kyogre, Talonflame, Kangaskhan, and a Xerneas. And then uh, we've got Daniel's team, which is uh, Gorgias, as I just said, Thunderous, Mawile, Kyogre, Kieran Black, and Hitmontop. Yeah. So Hitmontop is another interesting choice. I mean, Hitmontop, um, you know, Hitmontop in, in much earlier formats, actually, Hitmontop was a popular choice too. If you go back as far as BGC 10, BGC 11, even 09, uh, Hitmontop, you know, so Hitmontop certainly has a history in uh, BGC itself, I believe, because a lot of people used to like, yeah, in BGC 10, um, the comparison, people have made comparisons between this format and VGC 10 before, because VGC 10 you could actually bring Kyogre and Groudon as well, as, as well as other legendaries as well that were restricted. And uh, you know, him on top was a popular partner back then as well. Um, I believe uh, people paired it with uh, Helping Hand and Fake Out. It was just a really good support mod back then. Yeah, definitely, with the possibilities of both Quick Guard and Wide Guard, not to mention Intimidate drops on any of the yeah. physical attackers, really giving him on top the edge there. Um, in a, like, and also mentioned its overall bulk as well, which it just gives mm. it that opportunity to kind of uh, really like take its time and do its job well. Mm. Fake out support as well. I don't, I don't, I haven't seen him on top. I don't know what it's bringing, but um, that fake out could definitely be something threatening as well. Yeah. Just waiting for both players to start. Yeah. Um, Anything else I need? To no, there's nothing else I need to change here. Um, yeah. Looks like they're starting to connect. Yeah, they're starting to connect now, so the the match will get underway. All right, I can change that. Don't worry. Of course, guys, if you want to go check out um, uh, Roland on Twitter, of course, that's right there, at LumarioX. If you want to grab me on Twitter, at MikeTheAsylum. Um, YouTube.com, uh, looking for Lumario, is that slash Lumario? Yeah. Yeah, with his own title already. Uh, YouTube.com slash Lumario, and of course, looking for Motormouth Mike as well. Uh, the t this touchpad. <laughs> the beauties of using a touchpad. Yeah. All right, here we go. We of course get to see uh, Daniel's team right now, as we call it. Um, you know, they even miss him on top of the Gorgeist as well. The Gorgeist really... Having an interesting plot with the fact that it has the insomnia, um, not allowing it to get put asleep by the potential Smeagles that do come around in VGC 16 quite often now. Hmm. And uh, I suppose the other, yeah, uh, the other, the other good thing uh, about the Gorgias as well is I believe um, Daniel showed uh, skill swap on it. So and skill swap. Yeah. The best. Uh, I believe yesterday at the PC, um, I believe yesterday at, at the Premier Challenge. He managed to skill swap a Moody onto his Kyogre, which is interesting. That was right, yeah. yes, and of course the plus two special attack bonus from that, which yeah. really won him that game quite convincingly. Yeah. 
There we go. What do you what do you think in a position like um like Mitch is right now? Where, what do you see him trying to bring, and what do you think Daniel is going to be really trying to bring hmm. to face Mitch's team? Well, both teams both teams are have a have a um both both a trick room. Uh, I would expect probably see uh, both players bring their primals, uh, and but uh, obviously the. The Thunderous is a uh, little bit of a concern, I suppose, on Daniel's side, because Thunderous can, uh, you know, do quite a bit to uh, Mitch's team as well. Here we go. The battle has started. Here we go, guys. Let's see who takes it. Who moves on to the final, which again, getting to win some incredible prizes there. Three Rice Spirit. Okay, so uh, Daniel leads with Ludicola and hit one top. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I said your name. Uh, yeah, him on top and Gorgas. My, my apologies. Uh, and yeah, uh, uh, Mitch leads as only saying Kangas Khan. And uh, yeah, so okay, so you would think here that um, you know, the Intimidate drop is always handy on Kangas Khan, but I think I think we might see a wide guard play possibly. Um, potentially, uh, potentially. Yeah. So potentially, so potentially. Um, yeah, I mean, you've got Kangaskhan intimidated. You've got, um, you're also a threat to Kangaskhan as well with the fighting moves, mind you. So, um, one thing you know, I there's quite a bit that can happen here. Potentially a switch out to the Eagle guys, minimising any chance of a fake out. Um, mm. Kangaskhan with maybe the protect from Xerneas, just mm. completely disabling that, um, that fake out entirely. Mm. And and the thing to note is obviously that Kangaskhan is the faster fake out user, um, and. Um, there's also a chance here that, as well that um, Kangaskhan is an inner focus Kangaskhan. So, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see whether or not Mitch ma uh, makes the adjustment to uh, stay in his normal form as opposed to Mega Revolving. <laughs> Typical of both, both players taking plenty of time to think about time, and yeah. actually um, work on it. Yeah. See exactly what it is they want to um, do to their opponent. Here we go. Okay, so yep. Hitmontop gets withdrawn and goes into Mawile. Another Intimidate, Another intimidate drop. The, um, so that, so that Kangaskhan Kangas is at minus two. That's really going to put um, Cripple Kangaskhan yep. essentially a burn damage without the, with, uh, the burn, without the residual mm. damage there. Really trying to cripple the, um, the offense there of Kangaskhan. Mm -hmm. Not to mention resisting the potential uh, fairy move, like Dazzling Gleam on Moonblast from these so goes So you fake out into Mawile, but yeah, they'll do pulp. Rather paltry damage. And it doesn't gleam. Okay, so um, yeah, Mawile, yeah, it does a decent chunk to Mawile. And does a fairly decent chunk to Gorgas too. And the Trick Room comes up this turn. Okay, so the in terms of position, uh, Daniel having Trick Room up is obviously a big thing. Uh, you would think that the Xerneas would be switched to um, would be forced to switch rather. And that Kangaskhan will yeah, Kangaskhan it's pretty much got Mitch against the ropes because Kangas can't, can't deal a lot of damage. Um, and yeah, uh, Xerneas is very threatened, so we certainly know that one Pokemon, uh, at least one Pokemon will switch, if not both. Um, well, we but it, it, all, well. it all pretty much comes down to how exactly Mitch will um, play this turn. Yeah, one thing to look at as well, the potential will Lewis on the Gulgeist. I, I, mm. I can't see what the Gulgeist is running, but that will always, that will cripple the Kangaskhan even further and even then guaranteeing that um, even if the Kangaskhan switches out, uh, mm. maybe the turn later, that that will always put it allow, no matter what, a minus two mm. um, offensive threat, that is Kangaskhan. Mm. Okay, so Daniel um, withdraws and goes into Hitmontop, so putting even third yeah, a third Intimidate drop. One thing we could be looking at is the switch up from the Kangaskhan, however, so perhaps not always, uh, may not be the greatest thing for... Oh, the Cernia switch out as well, as you said. Yeah. So we see Talonflame come in. Really like Nickname Bird up. <laughs> Definitely the priority of Brave Bird, especially on something like the, um, the Hit on top. Definitely yeah. something quite threatening. So, so Talonflame is actually a really good switch in because um, there wasn't a lot Gore guys could could have done. There wasn't a lot. Um, yeah, when you think about it, actually Talonflame is actually as a, as a really good matchup um, against uh, against the Pokemon here, but. Uh, do remember, obviously, that Trick Room is also up, so the priority is also switched as well. So that means moves like Sucker Punch um, on slower Pokemon will go go before Brave Bird under Trick Room. Definitely got to look at just how much damage that Iron Head did from the wall. While Talonflame really not all that able to take good hits, that Iron Head doing about 55% there, quite a bit. Talonflame mm. not going to be appreciating that. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I mean, certainly. Um, 
I don't th I don't see Kangaskhan doing anything useful at all here. At minus three, it's it, it's certainly it's certainly yeah you can't do a lot. Yeah, it's so, it's, it's best move is to get the hell yeah. out of dodge. So yeah, Kangaskhan I think will be will become a crucial Pokemon in the um it, towards the end game. Uh, certainly when Trick Room um runs out too. When playing against Trick Room, um, you know we see teams that have a method of dealing with Trick Room. And okay, fake, fake out, out from the, yeah from the that looking almost technician booster top, perhaps. Top. And then Iron Head as well. So that yeah, so that manages to take out Talonflame. And of course, Talonflame's defenses um, are very paper thin. Yeah. And, and we all, its speed yeah. and power. It really. Does and we see like Fire Punch. Fire Punch Interesting. from the Kangaskhan. Getting off some very interesting chip damage, that's very good. Um, the potential and, for and the 20% burn yeah. there as well, actually the, the yeah. double chance of the burn is... So it's a very good. unique move there. Um, wow, I punch. Just wait to see if um, he brings in a grad on that. Yeah. Earlier uh, playing against Mitch's team, definitely quite a few tricks up his sleeve that I don't think a lot of people would necessarily predict there. Mm. Um, the potential for the Aqua Tail actually from the Kangaskhan onto a Primal Groudon really, really threatening. Mm. And if you're not expecting it or not knowing about it from maybe prior matches, it really is something that will catch you by surprise. Mm. So here we see um, Koga come in, and yeah, Koga would be forced to go for um, a single target move, assuming, of course, that Daniel went for a move such as White Guard. And I think that's one of the good things about Hit on Top. Um, again, it's 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 proven. You know, its move pool is is supportive enough, especially in a format like this where you know you've, you've got options of fake out. Despite Hit on Top not being the fastest fake out user, um, there's cer certainly a lot of options for Hit on Top here. Not to mention there also some like a close mm. combat against um, a Kangaskhan. Even yeah. with the trick room up, obviously making Hit on Top the faster Pokemon and really yep. making it exceptionally threatening with its attack power. Mm. So, so you'd also think here as well that um, I actually haven't been counting the Trick Room turns myself, but obviously remember when you're counting the Trick Room turns, uh, you've also got to include the turn that Trick Room is set up. So it's actually the, the so it's actually turn one counts as the turn is set up, and then all all preceding turns uh, you count four. Mm. Mm. I think it'd be interesting what we see here, whether uh, what it is that Daniel's going to do to really deal with the Kyogre if it's um some offensive presence, maybe perhaps a play rough from the Mawile or a close combat from. The on the hip on top. Either that or it could potentially be a switch into, I believe, a potential Groudon from... Actually, no. No Groudon on this Yeah, team. no Groudon, yep. So no way to really stop um, a potential Water Spout other than crippling how much damage it does, so... Mm. Okay, so Mawile, um, yep, uh, Mawile's withdrawn here and goes back into Gorgeist. So... We'll be able to tank those hits Yeah, better. tank um, those hits really well. Um, the Kang yeah, Kangaskhan finally switches out because Kang there's not much there's not much Kangaskhan was going to do. So in comes a Xerneas, and I believe he close combat. yeah close combat yeah so that was an excellent switch out by Mitch so um, yeah even, even Xerneas takes a you know a fairly decent chunk that's like 50 HP so nearly not not far off quarter. Of course, a big um, threat there with the, the negative and what is Oh okay so yeah wow, the okay on. so yeah so no wide guard play so it's the end of hit on top um, and there you go guys took that rather well. Most definitely looking into stuff like um, mm. special defense investments that no doubt Daniel actually mm. probably handles stuff a lot worse than that potential ice beam from Kyogre mm. might have been made to live so that water spout really thing, like even nice. even a lot of even a lot of Pokemon in this format take considerable amount of damage um, from uh, you know they can resist water spout take a considerable amount of damage from it like a lot of Ferrothorns um, yeah a, a lot of Ferrothorns uh, can't take it too well uh, and the uh, I suppose Gorgas, you know, Gorgas has been hanging around for a little while, um, so he did some low HP, but um, obviously Trick Room is still up, so Gorgas can still get off a few tricks here and there. Uh, and, yeah, and then I think, um, I'm not sure if, I, I don't, I, I'm pretty certain both um, Kogas are min speed. And, and here we see Destiny Bond, Destiny yeah, Bond. so this is, one of the, this is one of the tricks that, um, that uh, Daniel has on his team. So, so what is about, I think, one of the speed, I think that was a speed tie. So we would probably see if uh, Gorgas gets knocked out here, we'd probably take uh, it'd probably take Kyogre with it. And it scolds into okay, scolds into other Kyogre, so that's that's a good play. And burn, burn. That's thirty percent, which realistically means one hundred percent of the time. Thirty percent burn, they're really gonna be crippling um 
Kyogre just pick up residual damage, mm. which, especially for something like a Water Spout user, is going to be a huge problem as time goes on. Yes, certainly. So, I, b I believe with Water Spout, I think it's when you start dropping below 88% or 80% health, is that's when its damage starts to really get, really become, um, starts to uh, dive down. <laughs> No pun intended there. No pun intended. <laughs> of course, we see the Kangaskhan now. Without the yeah. Trick Room um, set up, that definitely gives the Kangaskhan a lot more room to breathe. Um, with Mega Morwile now the only potential Intimidate user, mm. Mega Evolved, um, Kangaskhan really does get a lot um, freer use of itself in this uh, late game. Mm. So that really was a, um, a really crucial switch in um, Luzonia so that, at that time by Mitch. Mm. So now, now it'll be interesting to see what uh, Gorgeist uh, does here. Remember, because obviously Gorgeist um, is the unusual pick here um, in the game. Uh, you, you could you could potentially argue that Hitmontop was as well, uh, given how um, how overpowered the Pokemon are in this format. And we got a few other games going on in the background here, so you <laughs> may be able to hear. Um, Smaller just Pokemon here at XP game. <laughs> And the protect from the so protect Ky from the Kyogre, Kyogre. Uh, and we see, yeah, so I think that was, a, that was the correct play to make. Uh, wow, and definitely the correct yeah. play to make. They and the, the trick uh, comes back up. doubling into the Kyogre slot there. Yeah. Daniel predicting correctly, taking the protect and getting the free um, trick room up, which is definitely going to put him in a much mm. nicer position um, than being stuffed with no trick room up. Mm. So, yeah, now we have to look at the options of what, um, of what Mitch can do here. Uh, you would think that maybe, perhaps, I'm not sure if that's Mitch is running Sucker Punch or not. Um, and, yeah. No, I don't believe he actually is. I think yeah. Um, yeah, you do have the fake out the double edge uh, mm. and the fire punch that we've already seen. Yeah. Um, held that last move there, again, that nasty arc would fail for those Kyogres, with, mm. uh, those Groudons, which, again, is so unexpected, replacing yeah. that Sucker Punch. So it all pretty much depends on how well um, Mitch can take uh, the incoming water moves, and, of course, the... You know the Gorgeist has Destiny Bond, so that's that's also a really big concern. So it really puts Mitch in a really um, awkward predicament. Um, he can't if he, if he double targets and Daniel goes for um, Destiny Bond. That, that's the end. Pretty much. You know, Daniel. Uh, Mitch really needs to try to predict those turns when it is um, Daniel is going to go for Destiny Bond because mm. both of those mods with such high HP, you really don't want to be seeing that go down to zero because of that. Mm. And we see skill swap, so yeah, skill Taking swapping the, the parental bond. Taking out that power of Kangaskhan <laughs> once again. Really just not letting Kangaskhan try to get off its offensive presence there. Dan has been really smart about trying to focus on slowing down um, that Kangaskhan and not letting it do what it wanted to. Oh, okay, so this might be a little bit of relief for Mitch. Um, the the Kyogre, um, the Kyogre's burn will actually take it out um, the next turn, but and but, but unfortunately for um, unfortunately for Mitch at the same time, there's not a lot that um, the Kangaskhan can do in this position. Uh, with room, well, he can actually uh, he can actually hit Gorgas, I think, with his move set on Kangaskhan. Um, but uh, unlike a lot of other Kangaskhan, um, and yeah, and then we've got the we've got the burn, which obviously, as I've been saying, will take out Koga the, the next turn. So. So yeah, this, this actually isn't the worst position. Um, anyone could still take it, but the Trick Room, uh, you would think the Trick Room matchup um, certainly has the better position here at the moment. Yeah, you can definitely see, looking mm. at um, Kangaskhan there, he has to be nervous because um, the Kyogre could allow itself to die from, um, from burn and just protect mm. and, and almost force Kangaskhan or Kyogre to go after yeah. the Gorgeist with the potential Destiny Bond coming. Yeah. Because that Morwile will quite hand, will quite favorable, uh, has quite favorable matchups against both if uh, one goes down. Yes. <laughs> Daniel, of course, going after all those mind games that he's yeah. so renowned for, or even order talk and psych. So, so it's either, it either comes down to whether or not Daniel wants to go for Destiny Bond, or he wants to get some chip damage off from the Kangaskhan, maybe. I believe Kangaskhan, its build looks like it might be able to actually deal with some of. Um, some of Wild's moves. And then we were coming into and the Wild while here, the... and of, yeah, of course it's Mega Evolve, so no Intimidate drop. And Seed Bomb, bomb onto, the onto the Koga. Okay. So really want to get rid of Koga. And of course it, oh, and it does have Skill Swap. Super bond. Parental Bond, yes, yeah, so no, unfortunately no KO there. 
The Skull's the Ooh, Mawile. Oh, he's got Mawile. Dan goes yeah. Mawile. This is going to be a really tough position for Daniel now for this game, and it might just be Mitch's game. <laughs> the yeah. Aquatel. Oh, the Aquatel. We see it. We see it. <laughs> Yeah, so this is Mitch, Mitch's game. This is Mitch's game now. So all, all, yeah. So all Mitch has to do to close out this game is protect, and the burn, the burn will do the rest of it. So the burn will do the rest of the work. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you're looking for a notepad. Uh, no, 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 play one, he play two. Oh. Here we go, the Skull and the Burn onto the Kangas gun. Not going to make much of a difference there, the Kai, uh, Daniel's Kai got going down. But nonetheless... Very well played by both players in that oh, game. absolutely. We see Mish going on uh, for the game one win there, and that's definitely going to put Dan uh, Daniel on the ropes. Yeah, so yeah, so th that was a very good comeback and very unexpected too. The, the burn really made the, all the difference there in the bigger scheme of things. Be careful with the uh, punch a bit. Okay, so going into game two, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what adjustments uh, the player the players will make here. And we saw Daniel's strategy there throughout the whole of the game, really trying to limit that Kangas guy and not let it get anything off. With the triple, with the three intimidates and the uh, the skills of getting with the parental bond, Daniel clearly assessing Kangas guy as a big threat to his team. Mm. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we very interesting to see um, what Pokemon come out th this game, um, especially with yeah, obviously. The, but I'd imagine that both players will make adjustments, and um, I, I would hope for Daniel's sake that he uh, wants to avoid that, um, you know, those circumstances again, because that the, the trick room and, um, really it really uh, the the burn really. Burns his chances, or yeah. full pun intended. <laughs> uh, we actually just got notes right now from um, the other game right now. Arkington actually taking another win over Nick to actually get himself into the finals, and we'll be seeing him on stream slightly later today against the yeah. winner of this match right here. The incomes um Kyogre and Smigor, and of course uh, this is up against Daniel's lead of Gorgeist and him on top. The same lead as last time. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But the same, uh, with th that lead really trying to cripple um, uh, Mitch there last time, and we and we saw from Arkington and Harry's game that sometimes the lead can make the difference. But hmm. it didn't seem to um, save Harry in the last game there, even hmm. though the um, the lead was still working quite well for him. Hmm. Okay, so Mike, what what do you think? Um, what what do you think the potential players are? I mean, of course, you got to look at um, the potentials of Fake Out, Dark Void, yeah. those kind of things on Smeagol, especially since Wideguard doesn't actually negate the yes, Dark Void. Yes, that is void. correct. Um, a massive thing there. We're going to have to write um, an angry complaint problem. letter to Game Freak and say, somebody, hey, somebody needs to hey, fix that. make Wideguard block Dark Void. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you've got to enjoy the, uh, the, the play on words there um, and the nickname on the Smeagol, mm. Dan Bark Void. But that, the, okay. Yeah, but if, if that were to change, you'd also have to take into consideration other moves like Teeter Dance and that sort of thing of in course. the game mechanics. <laughs> Of just those supplementary moves, those uh, those support <laughs> moves that just don't yeah. get affected by it. Um, but when you look at it, um, obviously you see him on top there with a the fake out, and there was also that fake, potential yeah. on the, uh, the Smeagol as well. And it's a crit too. The crit, that's going to make a big difference. And the water spout, yeah. definitely going to do some phenomenal damage on the arm. Um, him on top there, taking it out actually. And uh, the Gore guys and taking doing it down. Yeah, yeah, doing over half. Yeah, doing it up, leaving it with uh, Gore guys with about 45% there. Yeah. Rick Room comes out from Gore guys. And Gorgai's serving this role really, really yeah. well. Gorgai knows what it's there to do and continuously just set on that trick room, really giving um, Daniel that mm. um, that pressure that he needs against uh, Mitch's team. So in response, uh, that Daniel brings his own Koga. And I believe both since yeah, since both teams are very trick room like teams, it will be it will come down to a speed tie between both Kyogres. Yeah. One thing we could be looking at um, whether or not they have it is potential thunder. I don't think we've seen any of them. I don't think either of them are running it. But mm. if we if I if we've missed something here, 
Um, the potential thunder on either of the Kyogres could really put in some work against the other. Mm, definitely. Of course, guys, these guys playing for some incredible prizes. Three Arlo's from my spirit. Um, like this mug in case for um, a Charizard Amiibo. And a year's worth of the um, free events here at EXP Gaming, regardless of the type of event. Doesn't need to be Pokemon, Smash, whatever we want. So Dark Void comes out here, interesting. So I think, uh, yeah, this may be a min speed. A, a, a min speed variant. But of course, remember that Gorgas has an insomnia here. Yeah. So Gorgas does not have, have a lot to um, worry about at the moment. As he skill swaps. Um, Skill swaps uh, Kyogre. Definitely, um, I think, looking to make sure yeah. that uh, and, Kyogre and didn't get And the good thing is, sleep. Kyogre wakes up instantly after getting Insomnia. Mm. Actually, he's not heard that before. Really? Yeah. Yeah, any of those, anything on Vital Spirit, or any of those skill swapped on, any uh, Paralysis yeah. negating ones those as well. Instant. So you get Insta Wake Up. That's good. It's very good. It's gold, and we'll burn again. Will we see the burn? Oh, we see burn again. No, no burn. burn this no time. Burn. No burn for Mitch this time. It's ironic because last game burn burned his chances. Mm. Yeah. We're definitely going to see what the potential is now for for Gore guys, whether or not we're going to be seeing Destiny Bomb, C Bomb, um, plenty of different chances now that the the Smeagol is gone. Uh, no real worries of Insomnia or any of the potential there. So we need to see really what is it uh, Gore guys going to play its role here. Mm. Gore guys certainly can, uh, you know, outright knock out the. Oh well, I don't know if it actually knock out, but it can do a considerable amount of damage to the Kyogre. We definitely uh, see um, the, the seed bomb yeah. plus a follow-up move, possibly a spread move from the Kyogre, mm. doing an incredible amount of damage. We see the Kangaskhan here, and there is the very high potential air effect of the Kyogre. Yes, so I I think Kyogre here would ideally try to, yeah, possibly. I would think so. Yeah, and unfortunately for. Yeah, unfortunately for Mitch, it's not. Um, it's good in the sense that Mitch can actually has moves that can actually hit, um, hits Gorgas, but in the rain, his most his most effective move, unfortunately, can't do a lot to Gorgas. However, oh, that could have been baiting the potential mm. ice beam there onto it if we didn't see the Destiny Bond. But we Destiny do see the Destiny Bond. So let's hope for Mitch's sake that he didn't ice beam it, and he, he did. Does. Down goes Mitch's Kyogre, taking out the Gorgas. A strange versatility that Gorgas has, you're not always knowing necessarily what to expect. Um, of course, we've seen this team uh, quite a few no uh, quite a few times before. Daniel Lennon mm. yesterday at the Premier Challenge over in Bright City. Yes. He's definitely giving, um, I think, Daniel uh, quite a good opportunity here, yeah. since he's got the double, uh, the Intimidate over his gun. And I don't believe that uh, Mitch has anything else on the back now. Yeah. So... Uh, you know, I've, I've, I really should be counting trick returns. <laughs> I think I'll start playing down in, um, for, for the final, so I can keep count of them. Um, but the... Yeah, so Mawile would have the upper hand here in terms of speed. But, and, yeah, Kangaskhan being crippled there by the... Uh, Nate. And, yeah, so what, what happens... What happens now? So, yeah, the, I mean, the Mega one, Evolution... Uh, one, one thing we need to, need to look at is the potential for, once the trigger is over, the Fire Punch on Kangaskhan. Um, mm. Something that could really do some serious damage to Mawile, even at the minus one. Hmm. You see both Megas here. Fire Punch Kangaskhan. So I think the, the ideal play here for Daniel is to double into Kangaskhan. And it looks like he would have. Potentially the water spout or a skull, and the skull going directly into Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan not surviving, and even if the Trick Room ends this turn, that really doesn't leave much for a case of dealing with Mawile and Kyogre. Hmm. With yeah, it not so getting the Geomancy yeah. up, and obviously yeah. not, pretty much nothing it can do to take out the yeah. Mawile so in one shot. Pretty, yeah, so it looks like Daniel will actually take this game, um, and yeah, that would um, that would put both players at one all. There we go. Here we go, down goes the, uh, the Xerneas, and Daniel Ludicolo taking the game.
So we we actually put the um the player names in the in the in incorrect order, but um uh in the so the Mitch is actually on the captured 3DS and um let's just pick up this now, but like that it's not really biggie. Um Okay, so so really now we've got to look at both players are really looking at what it is they did right the first game, uh, the games they yeah. won, and what to change from what the games they lost. Um, of course, you have you know uh, people that you know these guys essentially almost veterans now of this of this season. You know, look at uh, Mitch who competed in Worlds 2015, and Daniel who's well on his way to getting to the 2016 Worlds. These guys are both really strong competitors, and it's great to see them in just a semi-final match. And it'll be incredible to see what happens in the final, um, whichever one of these two faces Arkington for the big prize. Hmm. So I, I don't um I don't believe we've seen Kieran Black uh, no, at all today actually from really uh, from Daniel. Um, so, certainly didn't use it against me. <laughs> um, so very keen to see what it can do. But, um, I will say it is it is. But a... then again, we we see a lot of Zonuses everywhere. So you think it's got its work cut out for it? Mm. Definitely something it's got to look for is um, mm. what it what it has as a chance for Xerneas, and you can definitely see that in the more while, um, mm. which has been doing a phenomenal job against the Xerneas um, last game. Mm. Uh, I will say that Kieran Black is definitely a sight to behold, and it's definitely interesting to come up against when you're not entirely sure what it is to expect. Mm. Um, but obviously with the, the fusion bolts and the ice beam, and an earth power, which definitely caught me by surprise yeah. uh, yesterday when I faced it. Mm. Hit on top and go, guys. Three for three. The... the the, 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 the ever changing. so reliable leads. I mean, we look at it; it's been working, um, and and we've seen that. Um, you know, Dan leading the th uh, both last two games with this, and <laughs> last game actually taking the win. Um, when you look at the first game, that start with this lead really did put them on match position. But uh, it's going to be interesting on how it, um, how it deals with the Kyogre's uh, Smeagol lead. What will Smeagol do differently? Um, Potentially to deal with it. Obviously, now that it knows the, the insomnia effect mm. that um, that Gore Guys has. Yeah, so it will be interesting to see what um, what Hit My Top decides to do, whether or not it wants to fake out, whether or not it wants to um, white guard. But Smeagol is obviously the, uh, they're putting in a lot of pressure. Remember, obviously, that Gore Guys can't, cannot go to sleep, and um, if uh, if Daniel so cho chose to, he could skill swap um, and wake wake up uh, the hit on top right away. And one thing I could see is the potential is um, the fake out onto the um, onto the Gorgeist to ensure no ice beam onto the uh, Gorgeist whilst it gets the free trick rumor and mm. passing off the, inso uh, the insomnia the next turn to ensure mm. that um, hit on top stays awake. That's something I could definitely see something. I mean, but no, Smeagol actually going to be heading out and in replacement of the Talon oh. Blind Bird up. As we saw uh, Mitch bring in this last game in the, uh, in the game one, which he... So you see the fake out into the Kyogre slot. So yeah, it looks like he's, he's really wanting to get trick him up. Yeah. And now the, the the very big concern here is obviously the oh, Talonflame, Flame, the yeah. Brave Bird. So. But super effective damage against both yeah. of them, and it's going to be a colossal amount of it too. Um, yeah. Despite being trick him up, it's actually, yeah, it's actually very, um... It's a very, uh... Very... I would probably say the, the words for it is probably a very crucial uh, matchup for Daniel. He has, really has to make his plays correct here. I could definitely see the potential of a skill swap onto the uh, the Intimidate, trying to mm. get that Talon Flame down to minus one. Um, but of course, having to then leave Quick Guard with the hip on top if it even carries it. Mm, we haven't correct. seen Quick Guard or Wide Guard today, so, mm. or at least in this match. Yes, and the, the important thing to remember about Quick Guard's mechanics is the, the fast Pokemon, uh, you know, the, the faster your Pokemon is. I believe it's in the same speed bracket as as moves like Fake Out. So, say for example, if you had a Talon Flame and a Weavile, the Talon Flame would, is, I think, is base 126 speed. The Weavile is base 125 speed. So the Talon Flame would need to be faster than the Weavile in order to block the Fake Out. So, so yeah, so, so certainly Hit on Top's um, base speed that doesn't really do do it any favors when it comes. Uh, Although with the, it, the trick room is up, so the quick guard yeah. would actually pop first. Actually, yes, you're right. You, you are certainly are right. It also yeah. has a priority, uh, a priority mm. higher than the plus one, given the brave bird, mm. thanks to Gale Wings. Yeah. Okay, and so the switch yeah, the Gorgas switches out. And into a while. Speaking of those so, intimidates. Yes, intimidates. But, uh, more, more, one thing. Hip on top's defenses are actually alright, so 
but, and but neither are going to enjoy a water spout. I eat my words, the Kyogre switched out. Ah. Green, back in the Smeagol. An interesting choice there. I definitely could have um, seen the potential for a water spout, but a close combat into the Smeagol. Oh, that was a very good play. And that's exactly why Mitch took it yeah. out. Knowing that that would uh, weaken the water spout and would gain nothing. So the focus sash on Smeagol. And now yeah. the minus defenses with the Flare Blitz. Flare Blitz on the wall wild. slot. Even at minus one, wow, this is a piece of damage. Very good oh my, and it takes, it, takes it out. It takes it out. Yes, because um, I think the while, um, based on based on the, I'm, I'm not sure if Mitch's uh, talent flame is is adamant or jolly, um, but yeah, uh, the I, I remember uh, the, obviously that Moir, when I played against Daniel, his uh, his Moir could take one flare blitz, um, even even at minus one when it magnet evolved. The, I do actually yeah. believe the talent flame is adamant in this way. Mm. Um, obviously, as you mentioned prior, with the potential for trick room with um. The bronze on which we have not seen, um, probably smarter to be running that extra bit of power on the Adam and Talon flame rather mm. than the Jolly. Yeah. Of course, we see Kyogre now. Um, definitely an enormous threat that we could definitely cause into stuff like Water Spout, Origin Pulse, mm. Scald, whatever we're going to see from it. I believe it was uh, both Scald and Origin, uh, Water Spout we saw from Daniel's Kyogre. Hmm. Again, once, once again, the guys taking this, their sweet time and actually choosing their move. The protect from the Kyogre here, most likely predict, uh, predicting the Brave Bird into the Kyogre slot, but no, going straight for the super effective damage onto the um, onto the hip on top. Probably going to oh take it out that minus one uh, defense, probably sealing hip on top's fate there. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh. The Dark Void yeah, protected the by the Kyogre. Yeah, Pogo, so, yeah. Nothing going to sleep yet. And here we have the Gorgeist, and we could see something very, very similar. That Gorgeist is most likely designed to be incredibly bulky and taking an incredible hits, and may have even uh, Daniel may have looked into the potential for Brave Birds from Talon Flames. Mm. So he's still got a full health Kyogre, full, full health Gorgeist. Um, the play is here to bring, bring Daniel's, uh, Daniel's position, because obviously Mitch has four Pokemon. Uh, and we see the spiky shield come up from uh, Smeagol here. Not something I would have um, yeah. seen coming there. Okay, so Brave Bird, that goes on to the... Can I only imagine the Gorgeist slot? Gorgeist, yeah. Yep. Wanting to really get yeah. rid of that extra support. Talonflame taking itself out due to the yeah. recoil. The recoil, um, yeah. Let's hope for Mitch's sake, it was worth it. Hmm. And Sea Bomber, of course, Spiky Shield is up as well, and yeah, Skull will do nothing as well. Hey, so, uh, yeah, so Trick Room, I believe, is still up? Uh, I believe so, yes. yes. Yep. I believe Trick Room is still up. So, uh, it can only be in its uh, the trick can only be in its last legs now. I yeah. can't imagine it's going to be up for much longer. Yeah, so it re really, really does come down to how Mitch plays against this trick room. Whether or not he may try and chance a double spiky shield. Uh, and although the potential to, uh, although not fake out the Gore guys, getting that damage yeah. on the Kyogre now, since we know it would have to go for a double protect to avoid that fake out. Mm. Or any other damage that what the Kangaskhan wants to get. Mm -hmm. Of course, we could also see the potential um, parental bond sw skill swap from the um, from the Gorgeist, which really put um, it in some trouble. Uh, the mm. Kangaskhan in some trouble last game. Yeah, so we we know for sure that obviously um, the Kangaskhan is running in a focus as opposed to uh, uh, Scrappy, uh, and it's it's interesting I must say um, the transition this meta game for uh, in a focus being so much better than um, Scrappy. Well, with those ghost types mm. being so rare. Yeah. And then of course you have people like oh the follow me. Follow me. I was gonna say people like um, Daniel who do decide to bring them in. I mean I've been yeah. running a for the last few days uh, the Gengar. Hmm. So there is those ghost types which do have their blaze, but at the same time yeah. it's not the most common. So C bomb will KO um, the Smeagol after a follow me and, and trick yeah trick room runs out. Hmm. It may have been yeah. KO those so, trick room so turns and yet. knew that that was the sacrifice he had to make. Yes. And definitely. that's something I could definitely put him in the driver's seat with the ice being guaranteed to take out a Gorgeist. Um hmm. And the double edge to the Ky uh, Kyogre or the return, um, yep. whichever it is. I think it's a return from Mitch, if I recall correctly. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, return, yeah. Yeah. So the return into the Kyogre. This is definitely going to be something that's really going to cripple. I think Daniel. I think Mitch might comfortably have this. Hmm.
So we have to look at what, because um, Kyogre obviously can still do quite a bit. Uh, we we can see that um, I, I think from yeah from facing Daniel's Kyogre it was it was quite bulky, um, and yeah it'll be interesting to see what it can live. Um, I would definitely say something similar yeah. for Mitch's actually taking yeah. on quite comfortably. Um, a Precipice Blades earlier today, yeah. a uh, Helping Hand boosted mm. Precipice Blades from a 244 attack round. So, definitely something we... There's the Ice Beam onto the Gorgeist, and, and yep, Gorgeist is quite gone. comfortably taking it out. Yep. So this is now, it's, it's Daniel's uh, Kyogre versus the World. And the Scald, no doubt, onto the Kanga Skunk Slot. Yep. Looking for the potential burn, not no getting burn. it though. So it actually um, looks like Mitch's game. Mitch is going to probably take this quite comfortably. Yep. And move on to the finals to take on Arkington. For the incredible prizes we got here at ESP Gaming today. And there we go, Daniel Paul beats the 2 1 victory. Yeah, and that's Mitch going into the finals. Yeah. Def definitely an incredible game. Um, both of these guys, uh, both uh, Mitch and Arkington, now guaranteed some sort of prize, and it'll be them fighting for the top prize of the extra artwork um, and the higher value. Um, Nintendo vouchers, and of course, again, that that free year at ESP Gaming events, regardless of whether or not they're Pokemon, definitely something worth fighting for. Yes, definitely something worth, really def definitely worth something playing for. So we're just going to take a quick break and uh, set up for the next round. We'll see you guys in the finals.